Hello friends, today we'll take a look at the current state of raw carbon fiber paddles, digging into details about carbon fiber that will allow you to make more informed decisions about which paddle companies are using durable quality materials and which companies are using subpar materials that will wear out after a few weeks. And I give you my picks for the best deals running right now in terms of high quality, durable carbon fiber paddles. So be sure to stick around until the end of the video to check this out. Let me start off by saying that there are currently so many paddles using raw carbon fiber, it's impossible to keep up. USA Pickleball lists nearly 100 new paddles approved in the past two and a half months alone. And roughly half of those are raw carbon fiber. To put this into perspective, that's a new carbon fiber paddle released every one and a half days. Not only are there a ton of new paddles flooding the market, there's also a bunch of terminology thrown around, like T700, Torre, Etched, Textured, Raw, and Bonded. So let's take a look at which of these are actually important in terms of increasing the performance of your paddle, and at the same time, can save you money by not having to replace your paddle every few weeks because of wear and tear. So let's take a minute to dig deeper into the meaning of T700. This is probably the most common label for carbon fiber paddles, implying that somehow this is a measure of quality. There seems to be a widespread impression that T700 is synonymous with the carbon fiber manufacturer Torre. In previous videos, I mentioned that Torre is a Japanese company that makes carbon fiber and they're known for their high quality products. Torre carbon fiber is also more expensive, so I imagine that if a paddle company wants to cut costs, then they would go for a cheaper generic carbon fiber. The problem is that generic carbon fiber probably gets damaged and breaks down quicker than Torre and other high-end manufacturers. What that means is that paddles using cheaper carbon fiber will lose their spin quicker due to the paddle surface wearing down. And the paddle surface will become less lively in terms of rebound of the ball coming off the paddle. So does the T in T700 stand for Torre? Actually, no, it doesn't. Dozens of carbon fiber manufacturers produce T700 cloth, including cheap generic ones. T700 is a grade of carbon fiber, and it refers to the elemental composition of what's in the carbon fibers. In other words, how much carbon is present versus nitrogen, sodium, potassium, and other elements bound up in the carbon filaments. T700 is required to have at least 93% carbon. So T700 is kind of a middle of the road grade for carbon fiber cloth in terms of carbon purity. T grades go from 300 up to 1100. And the higher the T rating, the higher the percentage of carbon, which makes the cloth stronger. And by stronger, they're referring to tensile strength, which is a measurement of how much pulling force a material can withstand before it tears apart. Tensile strength is important for cloth used on a paddle surface, but it's not the only thing that's important. Resistance to impact damage is also key because the paddle will come into contact with a hard plastic ball multiple thousands of times in its lifespan. So at some point, the T grade of the cloth can probably become too large to be used as a paddle surface because as tensile strength goes up, so does brittleness. A paddle surface needs to have enough tensile strength to withstand the pulling pressure on the cloth as it absorbs and rebounds the energy of the ball, but it also needs to have enough flexion or plasticity to absorb repeated impacts without fracturing. All of this is to say that finding the right balance between strength and flexibility is key for maximizing the durability of a paddle surface. Because as mentioned earlier, when the carbon fiber begins to break down, the paddle spin potential plummets and the deflection of the ball off the paddle is reduced. I figured this out when after three months of playing with the Ben Johns Hyperion paddle, I just couldn't get much shape on the ball anymore. Those nice dipping drives and flicks that I was getting with the paddle when it was new were turning into line drives landing six feet past the baseline. When I compared the spin of my used paddle to a new one, it had lost 400 RPM, dropping from 1700 to 1300. That kind of drop was causing noticeable effects on performance, and when I looked at the paddle under a microscope, the used paddle had noticeable damage to the carbon fiber cloth, resulting in less texture and less spin. Yola doesn't reveal anything about their carbon fiber source. This makes me think that they're going the cheap generic route. Some evidence to support this is that their paddle surface seems to wear out quicker than other brands. Compare the damage on this Solaire used for one month to a 6-0 double black diamond used consistently for even longer than a month. The Yola Solaire shows much more fiber breakage and fraying than the 6-0 paddle. What's the difference? 
6.0 uses not just T700 carbon fiber, but specifically Torre T700 carbon fiber. There may also be a difference in the quality of what's known as a peel ply, which bonds the carbon filaments with epoxy and provides added texture. But that's a whole nother topic, so let's kick that can down the road to a future video. So if premium carbon fiber products are available, then why isn't every paddle company using them? Well, the simple answer is that it's cheaper to go generic. The price of Torre and other premium carbon fiber products are on the order of 30% more expensive than their generic counterparts. To compare, the generic brands cost about $30 per square meter, and the premium brands cost $40 or more. One square meter is about what it takes to surface two pickleball paddles. So you can see that having a cost savings of $5 per paddle would really pay off when multiplied by thousands of units. Plus, Durability probably isn't much of a priority for most companies. Pros are known to replace their paddles every tournament or maybe even every day of the tournament, so durability is a non-issue for them. Not only that, but if consumers are willing to, to replace their paddle every month or so because of wear and tear, then that's a good business model for paddle companies that like to sell lots and lots of paddles. I want to take a moment here to note that Torre is not the only company producing high-end carbon fiber. After digging around, I found a few other companies that also manufacture top-tier carbon fiber for aerospace and automotive industries. These include Mitsubishi Chemical Corporation, also based in Japan, SGL Carbon, a German company, and Hexel Corporation, based in the USA. Torre seems to be the largest manufacturer, but I still find it curious that none of these other companies have been picked up by paddle manufacturers, at least as far as we know. I'd like to see paddle companies making more informed decisions about the materials that go into their paddles, because right now it seems like a lot of these companies are just doing what everybody else is doing, because it seems to work. Fortunately, there are a few companies out there who really do think deeply about making better paddles, and they're putting a lot of time and research into the design of their paddles. I've been in direct contact recently with two of these companies, Six Zero and Ronbus, and it's really great to see companies like these who are making more informed decisions. To bring it back to the whole point of this video, what is the best type of raw carbon fiber for paddles and what brands are using it? So now we know that advertising T700 carbon fiber is not enough on its own because any company can make it. So at this point, we're looking for paddle companies that advertise specifically the use of Torre, Mitsubishi, SGL, and Hexel, these high tier carbon fiber manufacturers. If a paddle company doesn't advertise a specific carbon fiber manufacturer, then they're almost certainly using cheaper generic options. As I mentioned earlier, new carbon fiber paddles are flooding the market and right now there are just too many to keep up with. But I wanted to get an idea about which brands are using premier carbon fiber and which aren't. So I made a list of the brands that I know and I started adding brands that have been newly approved on the USAP website until I got to 30. All of the paddles on my list are using raw carbon fiber. So what do they mean by raw? Well, it's complicated, but the simplest answer is that the texture on the surface of the paddle comes from woven cloth. So under a microscope, it looks like a simple basket weave. In contrast, some of the brands are using a sheet of carbon fiber cloth beneath the surface of a paddle to affect performance, but the paddle surface can be fiberglass or composite material with some kind of applied grit. Here's a diagram from Gladiator Paddles that shows how this is done. And as a side note, it's interesting to see that they are experimenting with T800 carbon fiber. Anyway, trying to figure out how carbon fiber is being used in a paddle can be difficult, raw or otherwise. And it becomes even more confusing when some paddles advertise that they're using a raw carbon fiber surface layer, but then they add some kind of weird grit glue over the top of the carbon fiber cloth. The Franklin Carbon STK paddle does this, which is an absolute mystery to me because it performs so poorly compared to raw carbon fiber paddles. I was going to do a full review of this paddle, but I don't see the need after playtesting it for several sessions. This pedal has gotten mostly horrible reviews since it was released, and honestly, I was really hoping to find a silver lining here, but nope, it's just a really bad paddle. The grit glue, or whatever they applied over the top of the carbon fiber, absolutely killed the spin. 
my test came back at 1,200 RPM, which is almost half of what the top tier paddles are getting these days. And it's actually slightly lower than a used Franklin Ben Johns grit paddle way back from three years ago, which in pickleball years is basically the Paleolithic. Honestly, there are no other saving graces for this paddle. It has a mediocre sweet spot, very little power, exposed polymer on the handle, and the last straw for me is that my edge guard was loose straight out of the box. Pedal technology is light years ahead of what it was three years ago, and Franklin has somehow managed to release a paddle that performs worse than their original Max Grit Ben Johns of that era. And they're charging $50 more for it. Okay, sorry for the rant, but I really had to put that paddle behind me. So, back to the list of 30 paddles using raw carbon fiber. Of those 30 paddles, five make no mention of the carbon fiber used. This includes Yola and Engage. 12 paddles specify that the carbon fiber is T700. Popular brands in this group include Diadem, Engage, and Selkirk. Lastly, 12 paddles on this list specifically mention the Torre carbon fiber was used. Some interesting trends show up in these tables. Firstly, the price range for these paddles is huge, from $100 all the way up to $260 for the new Engage Pursuit Ultra. But what's really surprising is that the most expensive paddles, on average, are from companies that do not reveal anything about the carbon fiber grade or manufacturer. The average paddle price in this unknown category is $182, compared to paddles that list T700 carbon fiber, which average $164, and those that specifically advertise Torre carbon fiber, which average in price at $168. Okay, so now is the time to reveal the top two best deals out there right now for raw carbon fiber paddles. I'm looking for the best value for the dollar here, so paddles with high quality construction, good performance, and top tier carbon fiber that is durable and won't break down as quickly. I'm gonna pick one paddle each from Gen 1 and Gen 2 raw carbon fiber paddles. Gen 1 paddles were spearheaded a few years ago by companies like Electrum and Carbon, and they're basic raw carbon fiber paddles that lack some of the newer technological advancements. And they have that plush, soft feel that makes a good control paddle. Gen 2 paddles have these newer technologies, such as thermoforming, and they have much more capacity for power. In my opinion, the best deal right now for a Gen 1 paddle is the Rhombus R116. The owner of Ronbus sent me this paddle a few weeks ago, and I've been very impressed with it. It uses Torre carbon fiber, and the spin on this thing is insane. My test on it came in at a whopping 2300 RPM. This is a control paddle, so the face feels plush, and resetting and dinking are its strengths. But the top tier spin of this paddle also allows you to take big, powerful swings and still shape the ball into the court. The R116 sells for $120, which is a great deal, and you can even take $20 off this price and get it for an even $100 by using the code 10JohnQ at checkout. My choice for the best value Gen 2 paddle is the 60 Diamond Series. I've been playtesting both of these models for the past two months, and I'll be doing an intensive review on these soon. The single black diamond is their power model, and the double black diamond is their control model. Both models use Torre cloth, and they both use thermoforming and edge foam. Most of you know about thermoforming already, but it's basically a strip of carbon fiber attached with a weld union around the entire perimeter of the paddle, including the neck and the handle. This completely eliminates the Achilles heel of Gen 1 paddles, which is that annoying tendency for the paddle to break in half at the neck. As Riley Newman experienced a couple of weeks ago at Daytona Beach when he actually won an exchange but lost the point because his broken paddle dropped into the kitchen. Thermoforming also has many performance advantages such as an expanded sweet spot and more power. The double black diamond is a great all-court paddle and its Torre carbon fiber gets great spin. My testing clocked nearly 2200 RPM. And the thermoforming provides enough power to make speed ups and putaways easy. The single black diamond actually uses Torre raw fiberglass woven cloth. And under a microscope, you can see that it has this really pristine raw texture. But the fiberglass cloth does a couple of things differently. Firstly, it's much poppier, making this a true power paddle. And the surface texture on this paddle grabs the ball better, providing top tier spin. The single black diamond actually tops my spin chart, coming in at a mind-blowing 2329 RPM. 
And the best part is that after two months of solid play, both of these paddles show very little wear under a microscope especially the fiberglass model, which shows almost no damage. Compare the before and after images of the 6-0 paddles to the Yola Solaire. That's a huge difference. And what's even crazier is that the 6-0 paddles have seen even more use than the Yola. So far, these are the most durable paddle surfaces I've ever seen. The Diamond Series paddles cost $180, and you can knock that down to $162 by using the code 10JohnQ at checkout. I've also been loving the Carbon X-Series paddles, and I'll do a full review on these also, but these cost a full $50 more than 6-0 paddles. And to me, the Carbon 1X 16mm and 6-0 Double Black Diamond are very close in quality and performance. So 6-0 is the winner for value here. As always, thank you for watching, and if you found this video useful, please hit those like and subscribe buttons below. And if you have your own story about your own carbon fiber paddle, whether it wore out quickly or it's amazing and durable, please let me know about it in the comments section below.